made it to Samaru, our next objective should be to head to Samaru City and find a way to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. And speaking of Lesser Lord Kusanali, even though we haven't heard too much about her, she doesn't seem to be the same deity who abducted your sister. But even so, people call Samaru the Nation of Wisdom, you know. If we can get a chance to meet the God of Wisdom, maybe she can give us some useful information! But, uh, Paimon doesn't know the way to Samaru City. Maybe we can climb up to that spot with the Statue of the Seven on it. That'll give us a way better view of things. Even if we can't see exactly where the city is, at least we'll be able to check for some smaller settlements nearby. Wait a second! Look! There's someone up ahead! Perfect timing! Now we can just ask for directions rather than wander around like lost adventurers. Hey there! <laughs> We're not from around here and seem to have gotten a little lost. We'd like to ask for some directions. Huh? Uh, did they not hear Paimon? Hey! You over there! Could you give us some directions? Huh? What's going on here? There's no way she could have missed that. Oh, wait! Could she be ignoring us? How dare she? Hmm. Well, even so, she might be heading someplace where we could find other people to ask. Let's keep our distance and follow her. When we get the chance, we'll just ask someone else for directions. Come on, let's follow her. Just keep quiet and make sure she doesn't notice us. Something. But, uh, it looks like that's not the case. Look, she's sitting over there. Wait, she couldn't possibly be living here, could she? Uh, what should we do now? Do we try asking her for directions again? Alright then. It's not like we have anyone else we can ask. Even if she's not very friendly, we just need her to point us in the right direction. That's all. Oh! Mmm! What a lovely smell! It's coming from that sensor over there. This is definitely not your typical place to call home, but at least it smells nice. Mmm! Maybe living here wouldn't be too bad after all. Huh? What's the matter? You don't look too good. What? Is the smell making you feel sick? Strange. Paimon doesn't feel anything. What's happening? Traveler? This is no time for a nap. Oh, come on, wake up.
Listen, as long Are you sure it's not serious? The Traveler's been out for a long time now. Yes, you can relax. Believe me, Master is extremely knowledgeable. If he says that he's going to be alright, then there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Oh! Are you awake now? Oh, thank goodness! Traveler, you're finally awake! Well, we're at... Uh... Good question. Where are we? Hyman was in such a panic when you passed out that she even forgot to ask what place this is. This is Gandarvaville. It was originally built by scholars from Sumeru as a place to rest in the rainforest. Now it's mainly used by the forest rangers as a base of operations. My name is Kale. I'm a trainee forest ranger. My master and I found you passed out during our patrol, so we brought you here. Oh, no, no things are necessary. I didn't do anything, really. By the way, how are you feeling now? Any discomfort? Oh, <laughs> that's master's herbal medicine you're tasting. He gave you some while you were unconscious. Uh, before I forget... Master mentioned you should take more medicine once you wake up. Ah, whoops! <sighs> Kale, what's the matter? Were you trying to retrieve the medicine? As I've already told you, you must be careful with these. All right, I'll get it for you once I'm finished here. Sorry, Master. <sighs> now, the guide to Avidya Forest's edible fungi is clearly posted on our bulletin board. But if Farbode forgets which mushrooms to avoid one more time, I'll have no choice but to leave the guide somewhere a little more visible. Like right smack on his forehead so others can remind him to be careful. Right? This is the second time he's come down with food poisoning this month. I'll be sure to give him a good talking to. Yes, please do. If, on the off chance, Farbode simply enjoys having little imaginary fairies dance before his eyes, then we'll just let him be. But the next time he requires any of our medicine, be sure to charge him accordingly. So, how are you doing? Feeling better? Oh, this is my master. Forest Watcher Tainari. He is chief officer over all the rangers here in Gondarverville. I already informed Paimon about the reason you fell unconscious earlier. But now that you're awake, let me explain it for you as well. It is common practice for Sumeru scholars of certain darshans to dedicate themselves to training and meditation in isolated areas, particularly the nearby forests. While meditating, they use a certain incense known as spirit borneol to help calm their minds as they enter a state of deep rumination. In hopes of asking directions, you two followed a scholar named Hapasia into her cave. The incense you smelled inside was the spirit borneol I just mentioned. That incense typically has no effect on most people. But for a very select few, it can have profound effects on one's cognition as you experienced firsthand. Does that make sense? Very good. Now, 
Answer me this. Did you feel anything after passing out? Say, any out-of-body experiences? Or did you see anything while unconscious? Hmm. Kali, let the others know to stop bringing their patrol logs here for now. Huh? Wh why Because these two will be staying here for the next few days. They can have my room and I'll bunk with Amir. Now get a move on and be sure to do as I've said. Yes, Master Tainari. Uh, wait, hold on a second. Uh, can you tell us what's going on? Sure. Let me fill you in. I originally planned to send you on your way once you finished your medicine. However, it appears now that you should stay a while longer in Gundarbaville for further observation while you recuperate. Further observation? No need to be hasty. As long as you have the capacity to judge between right and wrong, I promise that you'll understand the gravity of the situation once I explain everything to you. Based on what you saw after smelling the incense and losing consciousness, we can conclude that you experienced a powerful hallucination, which suggests your mental state is not in the best of shape. If you're skeptical, have a whiff of this. Whoa! Are you okay? You're experiencing a similar sensation as when you passed out, aren't you? So even though your condition is stable as of now, if I were to haphazardly let you leave, it's highly likely that you'd suddenly pass out again somewhere else. The rainforest is home to many fierce animals and hazardous areas. If something were to happen to you again, I'm afraid you might not be so lucky. For now, I suggest you continue taking your medicine each day and avoid wandering off on your own. At least until you stop having adverse reactions to this kind of smell, okay? Good. Now continue resting while I fire up another bowl of medicine for you. <sighs> Seriously? We just arrived in Sumeru and we're already having problems left and right! Paimon knows we're set on meeting Lesser Lord Kusanali as soon as possible, but you really don't look too good. It'd probably be best to let you recover first. Uh, hey! Are you even listening to Paimon? Paimon's over here worrying about you, you know! What's weird? You mean how you're feeling now? You mean, the vision of tree roots and red skies you saw? But if those weren't hallucinations, what could they be? Well, considering how unique you are, Paimon trusts your judgment here. But why didn't you say anything about it to Tainari? If he you misjudged your condition, then there's a chance you could get worse, right? Huh? You mean that Tainari already knows that what you saw weren't hallucinations? But if that's the case, why would he try to hide that from us? Oh, Paimon gets it now. That explains why you were so quiet earlier. Well, that settles it then. We'll stay here to rest up and figure out what's going on with your hallucinations. But it seems like asking Tainari might not be an option anymore. <sighs> what do you think we should do? Good idea! Kali's pretty friendly. We can ask her tomorrow about what she knows regarding the Dendro Archon and customs in Sumeru. Rise and shine! Come on, it's time to go find Kali! Alright, next let's see your right hand. Hmm, yes, not bad. But please remember that you still need to be careful, understand? <sighs> yes, I will. By the way, Master, I still haven't received the patrol route for today. Look, Kale, today's patrol will be a long one, so you won't be coming along this time. Besides, there's a chance we may encounter... well, you understand. But I have a vision too! <sighs> it 
Am I useless to everyone now? Don't talk like that, Kale. This is not something you need to be worrying about right now. Ah, there you are. Feeling any better? Yeah! Since we'll be staying here for now, we thought we might as well try lending a hand around here. <laughs> Seems you're not the type to sit back and take it easy for a while, huh? In that case, perhaps Kale could take you two for a patrol south of Gundarvaville for the day. And if you're feeling up to it, you can be responsible for cleaning the Statue of the Seven. Tenari, we're ready to head out. Roger, I'll be right there. All right, we'll be heading into the forest now. I'll leave any further details to Kale. Yes, you can count on me. So, Kale, what exactly are we going to be doing today? Tainari mentioned cleaning the statue just now, but, uh, that doesn't really sound like the job for a ranger. My Olaf Forest Ranger's responsibilities can be pretty diverse. We handle a variety of tasks, like checking the condition of outlying roads, maintaining forest facilities, ensuring fire prevention standards are met, and providing assistance to travelers and locals. As for Master, well, he has to handle more dangerous areas of the rainforest. Today we can perform routine checks on the pathway lamps as we make our way to the Statue of the Seven. Paimon, Traveler, this way! You can leave the task of checking the lamps to me. In the meantime, you two can keep an eye out for anything unusual. Nothing wrong with these two lamps. Let's move to the next ones. Oh, this lamp seems to be getting a little wobbly. Let me make a note of it. Hmm, no problems with this lamp. Good. The statue of the Seven is up on top of that large rock formation. You must have seen it when you came down this road before. It's pretty high up there, isn't it? Don't worry. If you're afraid you can't make it up there, I'm sure Master wouldn't mind if you don't clean the statue. Oh? I guess I'll leave it up to you then. There's not much footing once you reach the statue, so be careful up there. Paimon will fly up with you and help you with those hard-to-reach areas. Um, by the way, Kale, do you know anything about the Dendro Archon? You know, what's she like? Uh, that depends. Are you referring to Greater Lord Rukudavata or Lesser Lord Kusanali? Huh? Greater Lord Rukudavata? Oh, is that the name of the former Dendro Archon? Uh-huh. Greater Lord Rukudavata was Sumeru's first Dendro Archon. She created the rainforest as well as the Wall of Samiel around the desert. Her works provided a means of peaceful living for everyone. To the people of Sumeru, she's not only a symbol of wisdom, but also of power and kindness. Unfortunately, she disappeared in a great calamity that occurred a few hundred years ago. According to what Master has told me, the sages later found the newly born Dendro Archon and whisked her back to Sumeru. To celebrate the reinstatement of their lost deity, the sages dubbed her Lesser Lord Kusanali and let her reside in the sanctuary of Sarasthana. Uh-huh. Then what happened? Well, and then... Ah... Uh, uh, I'm not too sure what happened, to be honest. Huh? You're not too sure? But aren't you from Sumeru? Yeah, I'm from Sumeru. Ah... Uh, but... Maybe it's difficult to discuss this topic with strangers. If that's the case, then don't worry, we understand. No, no, it's not that. I'm not trying to hide something from you. Besides, I don't consider you two strangers. A anyway, y you two know Amber, right? Wait, Amber? You mean... Yes, that's her. I once lived in Mondstadt for a while, and she helped me a lot during that time. 
You could even say that she helped me become a new person. There's no one like Amber. She lives life to the fullest while always adhering to her strong sense of justice. She's ready to answer the call for action at any moment, but is also very understanding of others. She's like the spark that lights the fire in everyone's heart around her. If you ask me, she's a prime example of a true outrider. She's the first person anyone coming to Mondstadt will meet. You can't help but be enthralled by her charm and enthusiasm, causing you to fall in love with the lands of Mondstadt and... Ah, uh, <laughs> sorry. Ah, uh, Paimon thought the work of Outriders was a little different from what you just described, but to one thing's for sure, you really like Amber. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I was rambling on just now. It must have sounded kind of weird. <laughs> it's alright, Kale. Knowing that you're a friend of Amber somehow makes Paimon suddenly feel a lot closer to you. So, how do you know that we've met Amber? Well, after I returned to Sumeru, Amber and I have stayed in touch by writing each other letters. In one letter, she mentioned that Mondstadt was attacked by a fearsome dragon, but the city was saved by a mysterious blonde traveler and their floating companion. I knew you two were the ones she mentioned in the letter the moment I saw you. But, uh, considering everything you've been through that day, I thought it'd be inappropriate to bring it up. Ah, so that's how you knew. Yep, so please know that you two have my complete trust, really. I wish I could tell you more about the Dendro Archon, but I have been away from Sumeru for some time, and I haven't read any books. Sorry. That's all right. You've already helped us a lot. We had never even heard of Greater Lord Ruka Devata or the Sanctuary of Surathana until you mentioned them. Oh, I'm happy that was helpful. There is one thing I want to ask, though. Why do you two want to know about the Dendro Archon? Hmm. So that's why you're here. Thank you for telling me your story. Don't mention it. We are friends after all, right? <laughs> all right, we have a statue to clean. You both have my thanks. While you two are up there cleaning, I'll go ahead and inspect the forest canopy. Let's meet back here shortly. Ah, uh, I'm not a very good climber, so I'll just let you handle the statue. I'll go check the facilities up ahead. By the way, once we're done with our work here, would you like to chat some more? Huh. Now that Paimon looks at it, the deity that's carved on the statue is... kinda small. Hmm. Do you think she's supposed to be Greater Lord Ruka Devata or Lesser Lord Kusanali? You might be right. The statue does look kind of old. Hmm. Well, anyway, we'll have to figure that out later. Let's get started on cleaning the statue. Paimon will fly up and take care of the top and you clean everything below. Nice work. That's one clean statue. Let's head down and meet up with Kale. Kale, we're back! Welcome back! You must be tired after all that climbing. Let's take a little break. I brought some fruit and water for us. Yay! Food! What kind of goodies did you bring? Hey, don't be a party pooper. It's not like Kale is a stranger or anything. Besides, the best way to compliment a chef is to show passion for their food. Xiang Ling taught Paimon that. I prepared a nice portable dish that forest rangers like to eat called Pita Pockets. I hope you'll like them. Uh, wh whoops! Ah, no! You dropped it on the ground! Not to worry. I wrapped a few layers. 
layers of oiled paper around each pita. They should be fine. Oh, <sighs> I'm nearly had a heart attack there. Those pitas are amazing! You're quite the cook, Kale. Thank goodness you wrapped them in paper. Paimon wouldn't have been able to sleep at night knowing something so tasty had been wasted. <laughs> you really know how to compliment the chef, Paimon. Since you liked it so much, I'll be sure to give you a copy of the recipe sometime. I'll even include all my personal cooking pointers, so you'll be making your own pita pockets in no time. Yay! Thanks, Kale! It's hard to believe someone as diligent as you could have clumsy moments, too. Oh! <laughs> uh, I guess it happens from time to time. So, uh, Kale, don't you think that Tainari is a little too strict with you? He won't let you touch anything without his permission. Paimon knocks stuff over all the time flying around the Traveler, but he's never said anything. Everyone has their clumsy moments. No, no, you've got the wrong idea about Master. Uh, <laughs> sure, he may seem a bit harsh at first, but with some time, you'll see that he's actually very kind-hearted. I've heard the veteran rangers say that Master is from some ancient and mysterious race that is known for their cunning wit and reclusive nature. Oh, by the way, you've heard of the Academia, right? Well, there's a group called... Uh... Um... Um... Uh... Uh... Um... Boo... Something? <laughs> well, anyway, because Master does a lot of research on plants, sages from the Academia have written him many times, inviting him to take up an official position there. But Master declines their offers every time, saying, Sumeru City is too noisy. It'd be bad for my ears. <laughs> I know, right? They've always wanted to pet them, too. <laughs> uh, ahem. <laughs> anyway, Master could have easily left the rainforest to take up a position at the Academia, but he chose to stay here instead as a forest watcher, helping the locals every day and passing on his knowledge to trainees. In fact, Master's the one who taught me how to make pita pockets. Really? Paimon would have never guessed that. Oh, speaking of Tainari, he was the one who took care of you after finding you passed out yesterday. He even carried you all the way here. Paimon's still kinda upset, though. He kept scolding Paimon the entire way here. Oh no, I'm sorry. Master might have been overreacting a little. But, uh, it's mostly because Paimon wouldn't stop yelling, Why, oh why, is he going to die? It probably started to get under Master's skin after a while. Hey! <laughs> Don't laugh! Paimon was genuinely concerned about you! <laughs> hey! Now even Kali's starting to laugh! Ugh, that's it! Paimon won't forget this! It's time for some Paimonial wrath! No! Don't touch me! Oh, sorry, Kale. Paimon didn't mean to scare you. Uh, no, I, I just... Uh, I... I didn't mean that. Kale, are you okay? What's the matter? No, uh, I'm... <laughs> I'm fine. I'm sorry. I must have startled you both reacting like that. Oh, well, it's getting late now. Uh, let's hurry back to Gundarverville. I think Master and the others should be back by now, too. Huh? What was up with Kai just now? And why is she in such a hurry all of a sudden? Look, she's practically running back. Paimon can't even see her now. The rainforest climate is far more pleasant than that of the desert. Ah, Traveler, you've returned. Yep, we're back. Uh, have you seen Kai?
Kale by any chance? Oh, Kale? Yes, I saw her go into her room just a moment ago. Oh, okay. Guess we'll just have to wait and talk to her tomorrow then. <sighs> Hyman was thinking all night about what happened with Kale, and still can't figure out what the problem might be. Maybe she's in a better mood now. Let's go check on her. Ah, it's you two. I was just about to go look for you. Huh? Tainari? What are you doing here? Where's Kale? I came to check on Kale's condition. To put it simply, she's not well. You mean she's sick? How could she be... Oh, wait a minute. Could it be because of what Paimon did yesterday? No, no need to worry. <laughs> something as small as you could never harm her. Uh, this sickness is something that Kale has been dealing with for some time. Kale has been more excited than usual since you two arrived. A little too much so, to be honest. She hasn't remembered to take care of herself. <sighs> I suppose it's understandable, though. She hasn't been around anyone she considered a friend for some time now. It must have been refreshing for her to have you two here. So, Tainari, what's really wrong with Kale? <clears throat> Let's take this conversation elsewhere. Kale just fell asleep after taking her medicine. She needs some peace and quiet. All right, let's continue our conversation here, shall we? To be honest, I hadn't realized that you're that honorary knight from Mondstadt until Kale told me just now. I've also heard all about your deeds in Liyue and Inazuma. So, just to clarify, what I'm about to tell you about Kale is not because of who you are or your past feats. Instead, I am going to tell you because... Well, because Kale asked me to. And honestly speaking, I was against Kale revealing her past to you. But she insisted, saying you two treated her with sincerity and as a friend. So now she wishes to reciprocate the gesture. So Tainari, what exactly is wrong with Kale? You said this is something she's been dealing with for some time. Just how serious is it? Right. Ever since she was a child, She's been afflicted with a disease called Elazar. Elazar? Yes, it's a disease unique to the lands of Sumeru. It is characterized by dark and hardened scales that form on the body. At first, the afflicted may only feel mild numbness on the affected area of the skin. However, as the disease progresses, one may begin feeling fatigued and even experience peripheral paresthesia. In its final stages, the disease strips a person of the ability to control their own body, and they effectively become completely immobile. That sounds terrifying! Wait, hold on. So when Kale seemed to be acting a little clumsy earlier, it was because... Correct. That would be the effects of Elazar, which is precisely why I do not want her carrying or holding anything lest she ends up hurting herself. With appropriate treatment, the disease can be effectively controlled before it progresses to a more serious stage. However, there is unfortunately still no true cure for Elazar. Nevertheless, Kale's mother still hoped that there was something out there. She handed Kale over to an organization known as the Fatui after one of their members lied and said they had a cure. What? The Fatui? Ah, it appears you are already familiar with them. That'll save me some explanation. Anyway, the person who eventually rescued Kale and brought her to me for care said that she had been given to a harbinger known as the Doctor. I have no idea how this Doctor managed to do it, but her case of Elazar was completely stable for all the years that Kale was with them. However, Kale's days with the Fatui were anything but pleasant. Kale is a resilient individual, and always tries to appear cheerful. But her experience with the Fatui has left deep scars. Even now, she can still feel deathly afraid of someone touching her. Oh, Paimon had no idea Kale's been 
through so much suffering. Oh, by the way, Paimon, Kale wanted me to tell you that she's sorry for scaring you yesterday. She also wanted both of you to know that she's sorry for hiding her illness. She doesn't need to apologize. None of this is her fault at all. Well said. I hope you'll get a chance to tell her that in person the next time you see her. Kale once thought that it would be impossible for her to have any real friendships. I trust that you two will never let my trainee experience such emotional pain again. Don't worry, Tainari. We'll take good care of her. Well, it's not too serious at this point. She overexerted herself the last couple of days, which is what led to her breakdown this time. As long as she has taken her medicine and gets plenty of rest, she should get better. Though, I must admit that Kale's condition was much more stable when she first arrived here in Gundarvaville. She was interested in the work of the forest rangers the moment she saw us. I could see that she was serious about learning, so I felt compelled to ask her to join us. Her stamina has gotten much worse recently. Though a moderate amount of physical exercise is always necessary, I'm afraid the long-distance patrols are a little too much for her now. <sighs> All right. Now that I've told you about Kale's past, I think I'll head into the rainforest to find some ingredients needed for her medicine. I'll see you two later. Yeah, we'd like to do something to help Kale too. All right, but I must warn you two. The rainforest is a dangerous place, especially for someone who's still recovering like the Traveler. You must follow closely and listen to every instruction. No problemo! Let's go then. We'll be looking for a plant known as Lunar Lotus. It's often used to help those afflicted with Elazar recover their energy. Hey, Tainari? Where exactly are we going to find this plant? Lunar Lotus can be found all over the rainforest, but it often grows right here around Gundarnaville. Hmm. Given the name, it sounds like we should be looking for it in the water. You are correct. Lunar Lotus grows in the water. When fully matured, they look like giant blue flowers floating on the water's surface. Quite an attractive species, if you ask me. The large petals are actually the plant's leaves and sepals, which surround a very small flower. You should note that many of the plants found in Sumeru have names that are contrary to their species. Take the Kalpalata, for example. The plant is not a lotus at all, but rather a vine. And then there's the Sumeru Rose, which is not a rose, completely contrary to its name. Never bring up the topic of flowers with Tainari. There should be lunar lotuses growing somewhere in this area. Let's split up and begin searching. If you could manage to gather four of them, that would be sufficient. We'll rendezvous here once you've gathered the needed amount. Let me take a look. Hmm. Good, very good. These are all excellent quality. I'm quite glad you two came along. Your exploration experience helped save me a lot of time here. It seems we even have enough time to stock up on some other things I need. Hey, Tainari! Oh, Tainari! Someone's calling your name! They're dressed like a forest ranger. Ah, yes, that's Amir and the others. But didn't they just set off not too long ago? What are they doing back so early? Let's go find out what's going on. Tainari, thank goodness we found you here. We were just about to head back and find you at Gandarvaville. What's going on? We just discovered a withering zone. The withering is back? 
But the patrol route you were on should have been already clear just a week ago. It reappeared so quickly. Can you tell me the exact location? It's up ahead, deep in the river valley. It's appeared in a spot that blocks nearly the entire narrow part of the valley area, so we decided to come find you as quickly as possible. And the radius of the contamination? Sorry, I couldn't get a clear enough view to tell. No one in our patrol team had a vision, and it appeared to still be spreading, so we didn't risk getting any closer. Okay, I understand. You made the right decision. I'll go deal with it right away. In the meantime, please guide these two back to Gondarvaville. Wait, Kainari, why don't you let us help you? You two have only just arrived in Sumeru. You're still unfamiliar with many things in these lands. There's a unique type of anomaly that occurs in the Sumeru rainforest. It's called the withering. The affected areas not only cause nearby vegetation to wither, but it's also lethal to wildlife and even people. If you don't carry a vision, then you should think twice before approaching such places. Yes, Amir is absolutely right. I wasn't kidding when I said the rainforest is a dangerous place. As Amir said, only someone with a vision, that is, the power to manipulate elements, will be able to resist the withering's corrosive effects for a time. That's right. If any of the forest rangers without a vision come across a withering zone, we first make a record of the location and then have a ranger with the proper abilities deal with it, like Tainari here. Only someone with a vision can venture within a withering zone and find a way to deal with it. But you don't seem to carry a vision. Don't worry. He may not have a vision, but he's a real pro at using the power of the elements. Hmm. It seems the rumors about you are true. In that case, all right, you two may accompany me. We typically only teach visitors how to identify the withering as they're about to leave Gundarvaville. We'll make an exception today, and show you what it looks like up close. Stop. Don't move any further. Look there, in the distance. Huh? Where? Oh, look! Those plants have withered! That whole area is kinda gloomy. Even the air looks like it's filled with ash. Oh, Paimon doesn't like the look of this. That is the withering. All right, Traveler. We're going to have to enter that withering zone. Once inside, we'll need to look for what we call Tumors of the Withering. If we eliminate those, then the area will be saved. Thank you, but I must warn you. Don't push yourself. This is your first time handling this sort of thing, after all. Even with elemental powers, once you step inside the Withering Zone, you may experience extreme discomfort. If at any point it becomes too much, return outside the zone and take a breather. It could become a matter of life and death. You ready then? Let's go. Great work. Now that all the branches have been cleared, we'll need to take care of the tumor. Burn. Now, destroy the tumors of the withering. Yes, thanks to you two. We were able to quickly restore this area back to normal. Um, Tainari? You make it sound like we did well, but why does Paimon have the feeling you're worried about something? It's that obvious, huh? All right, it's like this. Recently, the rate at which the withering zone appears has been increasing. Even though we were able to quickly clear that withering zone, it won't be long before another one appears. If that simply meant more work for me, then that wouldn't be an issue. But it's far more severe than that. The withering is leaving lasting effects on the rainforest itself. For instance, even though we cleared out the withering zone, many of the plants that were affected will not recover. This presents a crisis for the ecosystem itself. Many plants in the rainforest are already in decline, directly impacting the wildlife that depends on those plants. And most disturbingly, 
as the appearances of withering zones have started to increase, Kale's case of Elazar has also become more serious. Huh? Well, why is that? I'm still not sure of the exact reason. However, I've received word from acquaintances at the Academia that similar cases are being reported for patients with other conditions. No, none that we know of. The withering has been recorded in Sumeru for millennia. It's said that it originates from the depths of the world. By the way, have you heard of Ermansol before? Ermansol is a tree located deep beneath the surface, although it isn't like any tree we know in a biological sense. You can basically think of it as a large tree that grows downwards rather than upwards. I'm sure you've heard of ley lines, right? They're like the roots of Ermansol, spreading and extending from a massive cavern deep underground all the way up to the surface. Ley lines continually absorb the memories of this world, which are then funneled into Ermansol, allowing it to collect knowledge and wisdom from ancient times to present day. The Dendro Archon is known as the God of Wisdom because her consciousness is directly connected to it. It is also said that the Dendro Archon's power is a manifestation of Ermansol. And as for the withering, its emergence is related to a disease that's affecting it. That's right. My ancestors learned of this from Greater Lord Ruka Devata's familiars a long time ago. But even those mysterious creatures did not know of a cure for Ermansoul. I'm afraid we rangers will be battling the withering zones here for a long time until a cure is found. All right, that's enough on this topic for the time being. Now that we've taken care of things here, it's time for us to head back to Kandarbaville. <laughs>